I'm Brian Nielsen, owner and horologist for Pocket Full of Time. I've gotten a number of emails and questions uh, concerning what does the three key winding places, or key arbors, uh, on a clock, what do they do? Why are they there? Well, we're going to go through and I'm going to show you the magic that happens in one of these Westminster or German chiming clock movements and tell you why it's important and show you why it's important to wind all three stations. They all three have a job. In this one movement, this is a modern German movement, in this one movement there are three individual movements that all work together and you have what's called the motion works in the front that is sort of the traffic cop that tells everybody what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. Let's take a closer look, shall we? For our little demonstration today, we're going to use a modern, high-quality German movement. This is a multi-playing movement. Not only does it play Westminster, but it will play St. Mark's and Withington. And it also has a night shutoff ability, but we won't go into that. Everything on this clock is mechanical. There's no batteries, there's no uh, electricity used at all. Everything is mechanical. And I'm going to explain to you uh, the auto correction also later on in the video. But what I want to uh, tell you about is the three winding points. In this one, like I was saying, in this one movement, there is actually three independent movements that do three different jobs. And they are all controlled by the traffic cop right up here at the front. And this is called the motion works. Now, let's explain what the three key wind points are. The middle one here is for the timekeeping. There's a set of gears in the middle goes straight from here straight up to the escapement and that is what's causing the clock to tick. Over here on the right is which is also the most uh, is the largest spring and the one that feels the the heaviest when you're winding it. This is what controls the chiming on the quarter hour, half hour, quarter till, and on the hour. The one on the left strikes the hour. And they all three are controlled by the motion works, a star configuration that is on the hour arbor, and this little cam right here, this wheel that has markings on it and controls how far it's going to chime. Now let me show you what happens here. If we can get in real close, I'll explain to you what's going on when it happens. This is the motion works right here. And when the star cam lifts, it starts lifting up. Watch, watch, let me get a pointer here. Watch this right here. There's a star down here on the hour arbor and it'll start lifting this uh, this cam lever and when it comes up and right on the 15 you see it moving there see it moving up and down now when it what it'll do is it'll cock and you'll see let's see if I can get it here you'll see the air governor which is right here you'll see it run real quick that's when you hear the clock make a noise about four or five minutes before it's going to strike and what it's doing is it's going into what's called warning. And it'll come up and it'll start playing. This one didn't go into warning. I already had it into warning. My apologies. So it, it sat there and played four notes and uh, caused the hammers to strike off. What's causing the hammers to strike off is you have a barrel over here. And all these pins co uh, correspond with the notes that is going to be played. It plucks the hammers. Now, that was at 15 till. You come down here to the half hour and there's your eight. Now we're going to go to the quarter till.
see and it'll cam down and stop and then when it plays on the hour now I'm going to stop it here for a second because I want you to see something over here this is the rack and snail this is the rack this is the rack this is the snail when it gets to a certain point it is it is going to lift another lever and is going to release the snail the snail is going to drop down and you have a little sawtooth right here and these sawtooths uh, are the the farther down it falls the more strikes it's going to make and it and it hits on this uh, uh, snail and the snail has a nautilus shape to it and it will uh, the for every hour it goes one step deeper and you'll see this cam right here lift up and the rack will fall and that will uh, give it the proper number of uh, strikes to correspond with what the face of the clock is saying so that's why I'm, I'm going to release the air governor and you're going to watch it's going to come up and play it's going to drop the, the rack and then it will start chiming and that will be powered by this this uh, mainspring over here. And it just takes it one tooth at a time as it rolls. As this, uh, as this rolls, it has a pin on it and the pin pulls up one tooth, locks it, lets the clock strike. Now, all modern clocks that, have, that do Westminster chime, they have what's called autocorrect. This is when you come back, say you left your clock running while you're on vacation, and you come back and your clock is run down. Well, if uh, the time spring had enough power to keep the clock ticking and these other springs uh, uh, wound down faster, sometimes the clock will get out of sync. Don't worry about it because in modern Westminster uh, movements and a lot of antique movements, you have what's called autocorrect. And you will notice that the clock will be quiet for a half hour, three quarters of an hour, and I'll show you how autocorrect works. There is camming in the, in the uh, gearing inside uh, between the plates and two out of three cams have to be in their proper location. If not, the clock literally says, wait a minute, something's out of place, let's wait until everything lines back up. Let me show you what it's doing. It's going to Okay, it played four notes there. It played the quarter hour like it should. Now let's just go ahead and spin up to the hour. The clock gets confused. It chimes like it's the half hour. Now what's going to happen when we go to 15 till? Well, the clock is still thinking that everything's okay, so it will chime for the 12 notes, which is the 15 till. Watch what happens. Now you would think, oh well, it's going to strike the hour when it goes down to the half hour position. But the motion works is going to sit there and say, wait a minute, something's out of place. And it will actually let it go by. It wants to, but then it catches itself. It sits there and goes, oh, wait, there's a problem. So it didn't strike on the half hour. It didn't strike on the quarter till. It actually has to wait till all the cams are satisfied and all the cams can lift at the right time, which will be at the hour point, and voila. Now the clock is back in sync. With a rack and snail, you don't have to worry about the chimes getting off like I showed in one video where the face of the clock reads five o'clock but it actually chimes ten times. 
one o'clock. I hope this has been helpful for you and enjoy your clock, whether it's antique or modern.